just stick it out there and uh, you know, hold it up there. The decons in Aries are Cassiopeia, C-A-S-S-I-O-P, how do you spell that last? E-I-A. And Cassiopeia is the enthroned woman. The other decon is Cetus, C-E-T-U-S, which is the sea monster. And the third is Perse uh, Perseus, which is the breaker. The breaker. That's the three constellations in the consta, uh, consta the, the three decons in the constellation Aries, the lamb, or the ram. <clears throat> okay? Now let me show you something here. As we look at Aries, and as you look at this, look at this. Look at this. Because what you are seeing by looking at this picture of this most ancient thing, God knows how far it goes back, uh, millions of years, since the beginning of time. This is the origin of John 129, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. That's it. You're looking at it. John didn't originate that. See? It wasn't or originated out of some ancient teaching. It originated in the sky as God has written the Bible in the stars before it was ever reduced to paper. You're looking at the Lamb or the Ram of God, which takes away the sin of the world. You say, well, what are you talking about? Let me show you what I'm talking about. What is sin? Sin is darkness. Listen up real close tonight, because you share this. You're going you're gonna to really come out of this place with some tremendous revelation and understanding of what you are, what this is all about, what this universe is about. Sin is darkness. As we're taping this program, it's December 14th. And if you want to say sin is encroaching all over the place, right now the darkness overcomes the light at 4.30. And each day gets shorter and there's more and more and more darkness. And what has to happen for the darkness to break? The sun, which is falling now, falling now, must submit to the Southern Cross. The sun and the sky must pass through the cross, the Southern Cross, and then sit three days and three nights in the tomb of the earth, which is the winter solstice. On December the 21st, the sun will touch the Southern Cross, and that crucifixion will take place. December the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, the sun will sit in the bowels of the earth, and on December the 25th, by the trajectory of the earth, the sun will start its upward arc back up to the land. And when the sun touches the Lamb of God, Aries, you have the marriage of the Lamb, and at that point, the sin of the world, the darkness of the world, is taken away. Spring is back, and then the sun sits in the northern sky at the right hemisphere or the eastern side, and summer comes. But remember, there is no possible way that the darkness which is surrounding the planet now, there's no, there's no way that the darkness which is surrounding this northern hemisphere of the east, there's no way that that can be taken away until the sun submits to the cross. It must pass through the cross on its way to the land. That's what's happening. And, and the interesting thing is, watch it happen. This is December 14th. It's going to happen in seven days. In other words, the crucifixion of the sun, the light of the world, will occur right in the sky in front of you in seven days. And on December the 22nd, the sun will be silent in the bowels of the earth. And on December the 23rd, the sun will be silent in the bowels of the earth. And on December the 24th, the sun will be silent in the bowels of the earth. And on December the 25th, there will be a resurrection. There will be new life. After three days and three nights in the tomb in the bowels of the earth, December the 25th, the sun will begin its upward arc back out of the constellation Virgo, born of a virgin, to ascend back up to the Lamb. What you also have here, and watch this very carefully, and we'll go in and explain it to you. What you have here is the origin of what is called the burnt offering. Have you ever thought, why would God insist on burning up animals? I mean, what is religious about a slaughterhouse? What is religious about smelling, you know, chopped liver or whatever it is? I mean, is there a... God who would say, oh, this chopped liver. Oh, something good's cooking. Really turned me in. No. 
So what is we talking about the burnt offering of the lamb? The sacrificial offering of the lamb. What are we talking about? The sun, the fire, intercourses and overwhelms and consumes the lamb. What does that mean? It means that the chrism, the life fluid within you, intercourses and consumes the pineal or pineal gland of the brain, and summer comes to your life. And I'll explain that to you. That's what it is. Do you hear what we've said? Do you hear what has been said? The sun, God's sun, has a rendezvous with the Lamb, and at that point, all of the earth will break forth into newness of life and flowers, and little animals will start to have puppies and all the other little things that they have. When the fire consumes Aries, the burnt offering has been consummated, and summer comes, and the world is filled with light. Then, then the summer overcomes the darkness, and we have the longest day. What is it, June? But look at it. Go watch tomorrow at about 4 o'clock, and you'll see less and less light, less and less light. And that's what's happening in your minds and in your consciousness because the sun, the solar plexus, is sinking deeper and deeper, and there's less and less light. But now so many have been willing to allow the burnt offering the fire to ascend back up into the pineal and consume it. And now summer comes to our consciousness. Summer comes to our beings, and there is more and more light, more and more understanding, more and more wisdom. As it is without, so it is within. It's the same thing. The universe. Look at page 237 of those little Bibles. The rest of you go to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Okay, And we're looking at the Aries, which is the lamb or the ram. Okay, And in Revelation 19, let's go to verse 7. And as you're doing that, look at that picture. Look at that constellation. Revelation 19, 7. The marriage of the lamb is come. You see, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. The Lamb in your body, the, symbolic, the symbolism of the Lamb is the pineal or pineal gland of the brain. Why would people get offended by this? Just because I'm telling you a logical way that this happens. That's all. This, this was known to ancient people thousands of years ago. And it was lost by the by the, through the, the dark ages of Europe when it was, my God, if you had said anything like this, they wouldn't even waste their time off with his head. That was it. You can't think, you can't speak, you can't talk. There, I was studying today where one guy who was a uh, professor in a university in Bologna, Italy, came out with this magnificent statement, if you want to call it that, that there was people living on the other side of the globe. They threw him out of the university, investigated him, and burned him at the stake. Who? The church. Religion. They couldn't deal with that. And so who then would dare say anything scientific? Who then would dare say anything intellectual? Who then would dare say anything? And so finally, when the Dark Ages started to unravel and people started groping around, all they had to grope was the Bible. And all they knew was that Adam was created 4,000 years ago when the earth was made. And ignorance prevailed. And I'll tell you something to this very day. There are people who believe that the earth was created 6,000 years ago. And, and I'll tell you, you get into a big argument if you try to tell them no, because they're literalists. Revelation 19.7, the marriage of the lamb. The lamb being the pineal gland of the brain. The sun, then, which intercourses with the Lamb, is the Christ Spirit. I'll tell you how it works. That which comes down from the claustrum of the brain is the gift of life. It is the fluid. It is the oil, which is used, obviously, in the sexual intercourse, which is called chrism. Chrism. In Greek, it means Christ. 
chrism comes down from the brain. Your entire body is flowing with this chrism, with this oil of life. And there is a part of that chrism that you must by, how do I phrase this? Being a little respectful and, what's the word I'm using? A little bit of abstinence from, the, from your sexual activities allow that which is the chrism to be safe in the lamp. See? And when then you start to go into your meditation, the chrism, the Son of God, the Christ, begins to work its way back up through the kundalini, through the vibration, the chrism works its way back up to the pineal or the pineal gland of the brain, which is Aries the ram, and there is the fire. That's when the fire happens. That's when the light happens. That's what Jesus Christ meant. If your eye be single, your body will fill with light. Because as you meditate, and there is oil in the lamp, that oil makes its way back upward, touches that which is the pineal gland, and the ancients believe that was the explosion. It's the exact same as the sun raising itself on December the 25th, traveling upward through Virgo, and then intercoursing with that which is the lamb, Aries. At that point, summer comes. But what happens if you are spilling it out or in whatever way of sexual promiscuity or you're not even giving yourself a chance to catch your breath? What happens? There's no oil in the lamp. And what's it say? It says that Jesus told the story of the five wise virgins. There was five wise virgins, and they had oil in their lamp. There were five foolish virgins, and they had no oil in their lamp. And when the bridegroom came, when that which was the Christ appeared, they couldn't see him. This is physical as well as spiritual. In other words, you become spiritually involved in this when you are willing physically to submit to this. I don't believe in celibacy. I, I mean, you know, I, I just, it just causes, would cause me a lot of problems. That's all I got to say. I'm not going to go into any deeper than that. I'm nuts enough without thinking about that. But I do believe, now listen to me, I do believe that you have to respect yourself, and I do believe that you have to set time aside and direct all of your love, all of your attention, all of your marriage, if you would, to he who is the Christ, to that which is the Lamb, and allow there to be oil in the Lamb so that can be raised for the vibrations of meditation and fill the cup that lights that oil. That's the chrism. That's Christ. That chrism in you is exactly the same as that sun which is rising, which will rise on December the 25th up to the Lamb. It's the same thing as it is when that chrism raises itself up to the pineal gland, the pineal gland, the single eye, there will be fire, there will be light, and the right hemisphere of the brain will open up and summer will come to your life. It's the same thing. It comes out of the where? What's this? Solar plexus, the son of man. And the son of man is crucified by your meditation of the five senses, and then the rising takes place. But there's got to be oil in the lamp. So, you know, you might come in with a little bit of a grouch on on Tuesday night, but m Sunday and Monday, you know, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Take it easy. Now, how important in spiritual circles is the sign of the ram? There was a place in Egypt. Do, do you understand where I came? Do you understand what I said here? Okay. I mean, you, we might laugh at this, and we may joke at this, because we start talking about sexuality, we start talking about intercourse, we start talking about semen, which is chrism, and all of this stuff, and we, we get to giggle and joke. But, but let me tell you, how, I'm, I'm telling you how serious this is. That is why so many in religious orders are celibate. That is why when Jesus Christ was found by Mary Magdalene, he said, woman, don't touch me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Do you understand? Huh? I cannot touch the flesh until I first touch the Father. Do you see? That's what this is. The Son now. In the, in the heavens, will be on the cross, the Southern Cross constellation, December the uh, 21st. It will then arc its way back up and move its way up to the Lamb, Aries. When it hits Aries, spring comes. And then it sits at the right hand and summer comes. Exactly the same thing must happen in your body. In the solar plexus, the chrism or the Christ must rise and that oil must be there. So it requires you then to give 
a total attention of your desires to the bridegroom. And when you do, and it raises up, then you have taken part in the marriage of the lamb or the ram. I was telling you about, do you understand that? Now, as I said, you're not here to believe this. I can't prove any of this stuff. I'm not here to prove it. I'm telling you, you go ahead and think it out. Say, but try it. It just might work. Okay. And, I, and, and I'm not going to embarrass you and ask you on Tuesday night anyhow. So, I mean, you know, do what you do. Let me show you something before I, I get into Thebes. Let me show you something interesting. A lot of people can't understand this. In biblical astrology, in the zodiac, biblically, through the ancient scriptures, you start at Virgo in what you would call contemporary zodiac or ast I'll be called astronomical science, and then I wouldn't have people climbing all over. If you were to start with astronomical science in a contemporary way, you'll start at Aries. And Aquarius would be the 11th sign instead of the seventh. But in, in the uh, biblical astronomical sign, you start at Virgo. Now, if you look at this, do you see this? This is interesting, and I want to show you something. This is why. Take a look at um, uh, Q20. Can you see Q20? Q20. What do you see there at Q20? Virgo, the virgin. All right? Fine. Now, if you will start, and that will be 12 o'clock, you'll start moving your clock to the right. See Libra? And then you go to Scorpio. You come down to Sagittarius. You see that? You go through Aquarius. You come over there through Aries and Taurus. And then you come up to what? Leo. Do you see Leo? Do you see the lion there? Leo is right next to Virgo. Virgo being 12 o'clock, Leo. 11 o'clock. This, this is the biblical way they did it. Why? Why is that? See, understand something. Virgo in contemporary Christianity symbolizes the Virgin Mary, the Virgin. Leo symbolizes the Lion of Judah, Christ. So what it happens here and why there's a difference is you're going from the virgin mind, virgin consciousness, take no thought, to the fulfillment of the Lion, Christ consciousness. Do you see that? And what that is, incidentally, is the riddle of the sphinx. That's the riddle of the sphinx. The face of the woman, the body of a lion. The woman to the lion, the spirit consciousness to Christ consciousness. Do you get it? OK. Do you get it out there? All right, that, Elliot's shaking his head. <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> but what I was telling you about in Thebes, in Egypt, it is believed that amen, Ra, the god of light, okay, incarnates in the ram. And so a ram is not allowed to be slaughtered or hurt in any way, shape, or form because of the god incarnation. When we get into studying Hare Krishna, you will see that the great god Vishnu in Hindu actually incarnated not only in humans, but in animals. And so then there was a feeling, it's in everything. Absolutely all life contains the spirit of the great god. And, 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 you know, it's pretty nice when you think about it. And there's a tremendous, obviously, amount of respect for animal life and, and, and Buddhist and so forth. But here, the god Amen Ra was supposed to incarnate in the, the ram, the lamb. Before the Catholic Church and before Catholicism, whenever you saw a crucifix, the crucifix did not have the form of a man on it. It had a lamb. That's historical. There was never the form of a man. It was a a lamb on the cross because it was the crucifixion. It was that intercourse, the lamb of God who takes away. The, it was Aries, exactly what you're looking at here now. In the ancient zodiacs, Aries is called Tamotrius Amon. That's T A U T A M. Where's my eraser here? T A M. Well, I'm going to spell it any way I want to. What do you know? T A M E T O R A Amon. These words are too tough to try to figure them out. And it means the government of Amon. And what that means is the government of Amen, the God of light. Amen Ra, the God of light. And that's very, very important to us. And why is that so important to us? See, because we're talking about 
uh, Ares, the ram, being called the government of Amen, Amen, which is the same as Amen Ra, the God of light. And why is that important? I'll show you why it's important. In your little Bibles, go to page 228. The rest of you go to Revelation 3. Okay? Revelation 3. You with me out there in television land? This is some heavy-duty stuff, Rinda. Huh? This is exciting. And you know what's so good about it? You're having revealed to you the essence of God's creation. You can be part of it. You can understand it. You can enjoy it. And you can go out and tell all of your friends. And won't they think you're smart when you tell them all this stuff? Revelation 3. Okay? And verse... Let's go to 14. Jesus Christ is speaking now. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the... Amen. Aha! Here he has called himself. Jesus Christ has identified himself as the Egyptian god of light. Amen. Ra, the ram, Trimetrius, Amon. He has identified himself. He has called himself the Amen. Now, I know that some of you may say, Well, boy, this guy's reaching for this one. You know I mean? Let's take a look at something. Let's go to the book of Matthew, just so I can show you something that's interesting. All right? Let's go to the book of Matthew, and uh, let's go to verse 15. Matthew 2. Matthew 2, verse 15. And let's take a look at this, because we're taking a look at the amen, the light of the world, Aries, and so forth. Matthew 2, verse 15, and was there until the death of Herod. See? Well, let's take a look at 14. When he arose, that means Joseph, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Ah, there you go. Out of Egypt, amen, Ra, the sun god, have I called my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The light of the world who was born of a virgin, Virgo, on December 25th, the end of the winter solstice, who was crucified, the constellation Southern Cross, December 21st, who was three days and three nights in the tomb, the winter solstice, December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, and who sits at the right hand of the Father, <laughs> the spring equinox. And the reason why this is so important is the same action that happens outside happens inside. It happens inside of you. Now, Aries is also called bara zigar, and the word bar means altar, and zigar means right making, the altar of right making. And that's certainly where the energy of that which we call God makes a sudden right turn. Once it hits that which is Aries, bang, it winds up. You know, the point is this. Many churches, you can go to church and say, this guy's nuts. I don't believe any of this. You can't say that here. Because the sun does everything that I said it does. And it does it exactly when I said it did it. And you can sit, those people that are sitting in here, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't get any books, you can't get anything to prove me wrong, because all you got to do is go outside, and on December the 21st, the sun is in the Southern Cross. The 22nd, 23rd, and 24th is the winter solstice. The 25th, it starts its upward track. It'll go out of Virgo, and then in spring, at around the 14th of April, it'll go right through that, which is the constellation Aries. It'll happen. And then in the northern hemisphere, it'll sit at the right hand of power, and summertime will come. And the exact same thing goes on inside of your body. And if that chrism, if there's oil in the lamp, and if you direct your energies by meditation, by crucifying the five senses, that oil will rise and rise and rise and head upwards to that pineal gland, and that same chrism, that same sun will intercourse with the Lamb of God. There will be an explosion of fire and light, and the right hemisphere of your brain will open up, and summer will come to your life. And that's what this whole thing is about. What's wrong with that? You're all looking at me. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> That's great. The chief star, if you look in the far head of um, Aries, the chief star in the far head is called El Naf, which means wounded. Wounded. So we understand then the, the origin of the sacrifice lamb. It comes from astrology. It comes from, uh, there's a, there, if you look over to the right side by the head, there's a star called El Sharaton, 
Enoch, which means the wounded lamb or the ram. So you cannot take this away. You cannot take astronomical science, if you want me to be polite, away from the Passover. It's the whole thing. That's exactly what it is. You can't, there's no way that you can take it away. Passover, let me show you something, my friends. And you can look this up, and it's even in your Bible. Passover was ordained to be celebrated on the 14th of the Jewish month of Nisan, which is April, when the sun entered the constellation Aries. That's exactly when it had to happen. Why? Why? I mean, you found out so far that, that astrologers proclaim Jesus as the king. What would we have done? Who would have done it? It's the magi. You know what the word magi means? It's, a, it's the root of magi is magician. They were astrologers. They were sent by Zoroaster. They read the stars out of the constellation Virgo. Coma, there will be a bright star. They knew what they were doing, and they followed it. They didn't go around following, hey, over here, Charlie. Oh, I think it's over there. No, it's over there. <laughs> they read them. They knew what it meant. See? And here is the whole, the whole Passover is based on the fact that the sun would enter the constellation Aries. A sacrifice that, that burnt offering would take place. What's that? A burnt offering would take place. The ram would be consumed by the fire of the sun. Don't you understand? A burnt offering, the fire would consume when the fire consumes the ram. Listen to me. Listen very carefully. When the fire, the sun, consumes the ram, the constellation Aries, at that point, spring will come. What's that mean? When the fire in here the chrism rises and consumes. In other words, when the fire is not directed to, you know, Miss Dolly, but is directed to the Lord. Come on. Okay. I know, but that's the way it is. You just got to take the gloves off and talk like adults. When the fire is not spilled outward, but is raised upward, that fire will consume the ram, the lamb, the pineal gland of the brain, and spring will come to you. And then it will open the right side, and summer will come, and all that has been dormant in your life will burst forth in new life. Flower color. That's what this is all about. That's what it's all about. And Passover was ordained and kept for seven days, beginning the 14th day of Nisan. And for some strange reason, the Christian community changed it. Jews didn't change it. Buddhists didn't touch it. Hare Krishna certainly didn't change it. <clears throat> this was ordained out of the celestial universe of God who said, it shall happen when the fire consumes the ram. It shall happen when the sun intercourses with Aries. It'll be the Passover. Because when your fire raises itself to the pineal, pineal, and intercourses with that, the angel of death will pass over you. You will come to life. And Christians turned it, changed it to Easter. Chickens, ducks, jelly beans, little yellow marshmallow chickens. They are good. Big chocolate eggs wrapped in colored paper. Pictures of bunnies in drugstores. Go into a drugstore, and for every picture of Jesus you find, you'll find 40,000 pictures of bunnies. We missed it because we changed it, because we didn't understand what was going on up there. But now we do. All is well. Now we do. Now we do. The sun in the ram, the Christ in the pineal, is Passover. The sacrifice of self. Now, let me show you something. You cannot sacrifice yourself. Do you know that? Now, what I'm going to show you should, should be earth-shaking to you. What I'm going to show you should be so exciting to you that you should get excited. I didn't know what to say. But really, let's go. Watch this now. You cannot sacrifice yourself. How are you going to sacrifice yourself? What am I going to do? Do I slit my throat? Do I blow my brains out? What do I do? 
What did I do? What did I do? You cannot sacrifice yourself. There's no way. All right? Listen to me now. So another way has to be made. Because let me tell you something. You can go and say, I am going to sacrifice myself and be one with God. And that's fine for about six minutes. Until something happens the next day. What were we talking about? A little dolly walks by, you know, and that's the end of that sacrifice. That's the end of that game. Or whatever happens in your life, whatever, whatever you become a part of, you can't do it because the human mind will not allow you to do it. So another way has to be made, right? Let me show you something. Go to page 16 in, in your little Bibles. Go to the Old Testament. I want to show you something. Page 16 in the little Bible. The rest of you go to Genesis. Genesis. And let's go to Genesis chapter 22. All right? Genesis chapter 22. And this is the whole answer. This is the whole secret of what you've studied all of your life. Genesis chapter 22. God did tempt Abraham. Okay? And he said in verse 2, Take your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and get into the land of Moriah. Take your only son, who you love. Take yourself. See? Take that which is the offspring of your mind. Take that self of yours and bring it to a point of sacrifice. And look what it says. Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass. That means that when you find that first light, that first first beacon of light which touches your consciousness, you rise up. That's rising up early in the morning. Saddling that ass means you're putting a halter on your own stubborn nature. It's the same ass that Jesus rode into Jerusalem in Matthew 21. Your stubborn nature. You've got to, first of all, put a saddle on your stubbornness. You've got to rise early. In other words, when that first glint of light starts to touch your consciousness, you've got to say, I'm going. And you've got to head out to that mountain. And you've got to take your first son. That's your flesh. See? And he takes his flesh. And on, on verse 4, on the third day, Abraham lifted up and he saw the place far off. It means there's going to be new life. There's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be a recreation. All things are going to happen new. And we'll go on with that. I don't really have a lot of time, but in verse 8, Abraham said, that, that, that verse 7, Isaac said, where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Do you remember what we were talking about? Where's the lamb for the burnt offering? And in verse 8, Abraham said, my son God will provide himself. So they went. They came to the place which God built. He bound Isaac. In verse 10, Abraham stretched forth his hand, took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11, and the angel of the Lord called out and said, Abraham, don't touch him. You know what that's saying? You can't do it. There's no way that you can sacrifice that part of you. It won't work. You cannot. And so many religious people have tried. They've gone into monasteries. They've hid themselves from the world. They've clothed themselves. They put veils over their face. They've done everything they can, but they could never do it because you can't block out that mind of yours. If you're not doing it on the outside, you're doing it on the inside. And so what this is saying is, oh, Abraham, you've got me turned on because you were willing. You're willing to try, but you can't. So put your knife down, boy. And he turned around, and there was the ram. There was the ram. In other words, in this particular episode, God is saying, there is nothing you can do, but if you're willing to just try, if you're willing just to offer it up, if you're willing just to shut down as much as you can, I will raise that Christ up within you, and it will raise itself up, and that light and that fire and passion will consume that lamb, and that sacrifice will set you free. You see what I'm saying? In other words, in as much as there is no possible way that a human being can do what has to be done in order to get to God consciousness because you can't even reach the right hemisphere of the brain. All then that has to be done is you come into meditation and you say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in whatever name that God is to you, I raise myself, I yield myself, I do the best I can, I just, here I am. Raise my hand, I got the knife in the hand, but I, what can I do? And he'll say, throw it down. You're not going to have to do anything because that energy that will come from you simply because you tried will raise itself up like the sun and ignite that which is the pineal, lift you to the right hemisphere, 
and you'll reach salvation, the ram that takes away the sins. Do you understand? The ram caught by its horn, the bush, it means the power of that which is to be sacrificed. That power, the horn is the power in the bush means right in the middle of your mind. Don't you see? The ram was caught by its horn by the bush, right? Where did Moses see the fire? In the burning bush. Bush means that which is attached to the earth. It means the center of your carnal consciousness. In the center of your carnal consciousness will be that which is the spirit. And that spirit, all you have to do is say, I'll come Tuesday night. I'll sit here. I'll do home. I'll do whatever. I'll take a shot at it. All you have to do is be willing. All you have to do is do what Abraham did. Get up early at the first light when that starts to touch your consciousness. Take yourself out to that mountain. Raise your consciousness. Go up there and make a little bit of an effort, and all of a sudden that ram will be supplied to you, and that chrism, that, that Christ power will flow up, and that fire will happen, and it will light up the right hemisphere. That's why. That's why a lot of people say, gee, that was a terrible thing to do. I mean, you know, take a kid up there, tie him to a thing, and then say, put a knife on his head. Yeah, you know, because if it really happened, that kid wouldn't be worth anything for the rest of his life. This is my father. We just went on a picnic. What good is he going to be? What happens if your father, you know, stands over your tied to a tree and he's got a knife at your head? Listen, uh, this is for your own good and for mine too. We're going to get all our sins taken care of <laughs> by you. Eek. Yeah. Forget that. Okay? This is allegory. Galatians 4.24, which things are an allegory? It's a story. It's all it was. God was not going to subject anybody to that lunacy. God was simply saying to you, you are not going to have to make the sacrifice because you can't. So don't put your head in a bucket. Don't join a monastery. Don't put black over your face. Don't do anything like that. Just simply turn your attention upward and I will provide the lamb. I will provide the pineal gland of the brain. I will provide my son, which will be the chrism, which will rise and allow it then to consume itself in the fire of that which is spiritual awakening. Wow, what time is it? What time did we start? Huh? 25 after 8? Okay, well, I'm going to, I was going to, I can't do Cassiopeia. We'll have, to, we'll have to do this. That's going to put air. See, that's going to put Aquarius back a week or so. Because I wanted to tell you that when we get to Aquarius, we're gonna, after we do finish with Aries, we're going to do Taurus, and then we're going to go to Aquarius. And at Aquarius, we're going to enter into studying Uranus, which is the activity going on in the heavens today. And we're not only going to take it on a general basis, but we're going to allow each one of you to understand how it affects. I'm not going to bring people up and say, this is what's going to happen. I'm not, don't believe, don't understand. How the opportunities for you and your personality with this movement of Uranus in the heavens, you know, the opportunities that you have. Joan's going to, to help me out with that. And, you know. So it's going to be an exciting time. And I hope that you were able to follow me with this. If you need any of the papers, then you... Um, let me know, and I'll, I'll send, you know, the papers to you. I, I just, you know, I, I feel bad that there are, you know, empty seats here because did, if you listened and if you made an effort, you understood something tonight that you never understood before in your life, you know. The meaning of all this, the meaning of the burnt offering, the meaning of Abraham's escapade on that mountain, what does it mean to you? And the understanding that, indeed, there's nothing that I can do to be holy. There's nothing that I can do to open the right side. There's nothing that I can do to make the spiritual fire light. I don't have to. But I do have to climb the mountain. I do have to make the effort. And the climbing the mountain is done by meditation. See? And on that third day, meaning there'll be new life in you and resurrection, you'll find that indeed the ram is there. And indeed the Son is given to you. The Christ has come from the claustrum into the solar plexus. And now the Christ, that Son of Man, must be sacrificed. Do you understand that? The Son of Man, which came from the claustrum, the chrism, must be sacrificed through meditation by shutting down the five senses. That's the five wounds in the skull and consciousness. And if you'll do that, then he will rise. The chrism will rise. The oil will rise, and it will rise back up into the ram. The marriage, the wedding marriage of the lamb will then take place when the sun intercourses with the lamb. That's the marriage of the lamb. And then, of course, the fire of the sun will consume the pineal gland, which means the uh, burnt offering will take place and 
the right sky will light up and you'll have the summer of your life. Now, you can go the other way and say that, yes, God had the, this man tie his son to a tree and hold a knife at his throat, and then all of a sudden at the last minute intervened. I don't buy that. I don't like that. Or you could go and say, well, all this means is that uh, there's going to be an atomic bomb dropped on Israel. I don't buy that. Or you can say, well, we just have to take the whole thing in faith and not understand it, and uh, then we'll wait until we die and see what happens. Forget it. I, I'm not interested in that. Uh, you can understand it now. You can be a part of it now. And I think uh, scientifically, physically, spiritually, you'll understand that the macrocosm as it is without, the microcosm as it is within. And if you'll get involved in it, this age that you're living in is the age in which Jesus said, when you see the man carrying the pitcher of water, go into the house, into the upper room. This is the age of the man with the pitcher of water. You go into yourself, go to the higher consciousness, and all of this is there for you, right within yourself. And it simply requires you to obey Jesus Christ and practice the single eye. That you, you know, that's not a big deal. That's all in the story Abraham had to do, was just get up and go to the mountain. He didn't have to do anything really any other than that. That's all you have to do. Get up, go to the mountain. And you know what? That's a big chore. And most people, especially Christian people, will tell you, don't do it. Don't do it. Because you'll meet demons on the mountaintop. But you know better. Father, in Jesus' name.